Okay, today we're out in the shop. I'm over here at the table saw. And the problem I've been having when I'm cutting uh, thin strips, maybe you're cutting thin strips for a model boat that you want to use as planks or uh, wings for your whirly gig. I like to make my wings 3 16 and when I have these wings exactly 3 16 <clears throat> so that these wings will fit in the slots that I cut earlier and I, my blade cuts a 3 16 slot and you want a nice snug fit it's got to be it's got to be pretty precise and unfortunately I only have the one table saw so when I knock it down and do other operations you know cross cutting or making slots and then I come back and I want to cut thin blades again I have to cut a bunch of test pieces again and again until I get it just right and then even then I what I've ended up doing is cutting them a little oversized and then going back and sanding them to fit which makes a lot of dust, takes a lot of time. I'm trying to figure a method to get the table saw rip fence here to stay stable because as I was cutting, as I cut here, it would, it would get wider. And then I'd come back and I'd tap it, tap it back into place. It has a mechanism here where it tightens against, it pulls a lever on the other side and tightens it and it's supposed to stay straight. But it, it keeps moving. You know, I've had the same problem on my old table saw. So anyway, this is the only one I have available to me at the moment. So I made this extension here to help get support the Whirligig blades that I was making. It still takes a lot, a lot of setup time, and every time I do it, I have to do and redo what I've done here. I thought this might be helpful. Is I drilled and tapped. The aluminum table 1032 tapped at 1032 and put these blocks on here and the blocks are just a, a block of wood with a slot cut in it I did a drill and a saw I made a slot so I could adjust these and then it, they would hit up against the rip fence and hold it in the exact position for cut after cut after cut consistent keeping my blades a consistent width this setup when I knock this down do other operations on this saw and then come back to it I have to take these out so then I have to reset these again and it's a it's a trial and error cut and try test it when I put a proper size blade in here and tighten the tighten the handle down here it's still my first trial is either gonna be way short way small or way big I'll take a block of wood cut it on the the bandsaw to the shape I want and then slice it off here S cut slices off but I'm wasting usually on the average of one or two slices so I'm only getting like three out of a whole chunk of wood so it's very wasteful to not have this set at the proper width ahead of time so I came up with a possible fix and that's what we're gonna do today if you're a ship modeler and you you want to make strips for planks and get them accurate so they're so you don't have a lumpy side of your ship or boat or you're a whirly gig maker and you want to have accurate blades or anything there's boxes if you want to make boxes with like a jewelry box with accurate width every time with easy setup this is what I came up with a little lay awake engineering I thought utilize these little blocks or something like them and put a threaded bolt through here on both on both of these so I would need a larger block with some threads and I have to cut some threads in it and I was thinking of first doing it out of wood wood you know is not gonna be as so instead of wood instead of making this out of wood I thought if I can find a chunk of aluminum this little shape out with the hacksaw and aluminum and then tap the aluminum here for screw or bolt with a somewhat fine thread and then just drill a hole clearance hole for the 1032 to hold it down and then I could come in here 
use the screw with a really fine adjustment to slide this in and out and set it very precisely. So I'm going to make two of these. I'm going to make them out of aluminum. One here and one here. Similar to these, just to make it out of aluminum and I'm going to have an adjustment screw. Okay, we're working on the table saw rip fence adjuster. This is a block of aluminum I had in the scrap box. I have no idea where it came from, but we're going to cut it in half and make two little brackets based on the wooden brackets that I had already. The, these are just wooden stops. So instead of a stop, I'm going to make a fine adjustment. So I need two of these. I saw this in half. Okay, I'm going to convert this Sherline uh, 4400 lathe to a mill, so it's got uh, a milling attachment. And the instructions, the advertising says you can do it in under a minute, which I have found to be substantially true. So you just take off this, loosen this screw, and I've got the milling attachment down here on the shelf underneath my workbench. Clean off the ways here so it can sit evenly. It's got a little keyway. It goes on there like that. Tighten this back up. Nice and firm. And then put the motor and spindle assembly on here. It attaches in the same way. done that's certainly under a minute so what I'll do is set these up and square them up clean them up a little bit with a an end mill in the uh, the shear line here it's going to be like a little L and then the uh, the quarter 20 screw will go through and adjust will press against the table saw rip fence and keep it hopefully keep it in place and alignment where I want it. All right, I'm taking off the tool holder for the lathe. Set that aside. And then uh, this is a Sherline mill vise. So the good thing is uh, most most vices when the move the movable jaw lifts up when you tighten them. This jaw is designed to pull down when you tighten it, which is which is a good thing. Makes it more accurate. Just easier to work here in my hands than it is with it underneath the, the spindle and on the table here. It's easier just it's so small. So that's in there pretty good. So they have these little tie downs. They're kind of a miniature copy of a mill table clamp. And they fit in the, the table slots here on, on the uh, cross slide. All right. So you have the little nut and you have to have the right size screw otherwise it will hit the bottom of the cross slide slot and before it gets tight so you can't use too long of a screw in here. I'm only going to use three that that should secure it adequately. And one handy thing is you can use the edge of the cross slide table. It's it's a cross slide in the context of a lathe, but it's a table when you're using it like a mill. So you can use the edge of that to align your work perfectly parallel to the cross slide axis right right here. Like that, up against the these one, two, three blocks. Ah, there. It's 
perfectly square. And they measure one by two by three. So you can use them for all kinds of stuff, especially with the mill and layout. And now I have it in there. Now I need to put a tool in here to cut this. And I'm going to use a cutter. So that just fits in there like that. And then when you draw it up into the inside of the spindle, that's tapered, it matches the taper and it, it, it tightens it very securely. Killing a fly with a sledgehammer here. Bit of snug, that's all it needs. It's hard to see, but I have the uh, quarter inch mill cutter. Bring the spindle down to just touch off on the work and to just smooth this off. It's really rough from the hacksaw cutting. This is going to make a, quite a bit of mess. Uh, sometimes I take a piece of cardboard and uh, set it up. Up here, let's take a piece of cardboard and lay it back here. Wrap it up with something just to keep all that, uh, all those chips from just flying everywhere. So I'll be uh, operating the hand wheel here for the X axis and this hand wheel for the Z axis. And then check my speed here. Now another, uh, I could use a fly cutter, I might switch over to my fly cutter. This is quite a bit of surface area to do with just a quarter inch dip. It is working. Alright, that's enough of that. So I'm going to switch over to the to the fly cutter because this is just something that should take five minutes. All set up. The fly cutter is tapered, the shank of the fly cutter is tapered to fit in the spindle of the, the sure line. So I have the fly cutter all set up and I'll just I'll move it down move the uh, spindle down to the work with the, the y-axis here. Move it across with the x-axis and you know if this was CNC you'd have a stepper motor here and you just do it with the computer. I'm uh, doing everything by hand. Uh, a CNC, Sureline CNC setup with everything that you need would probably run you between 2500 and three thousand thirty three hundred dollars ready to go and you can adapt you can adapt with this so. here we go Hand wheels are graduated. Very nice, easy to read graduations. That's where they're. That's why they're red. And they're they're graduated in thousands of an inch. And you can you can. It's not hard to set this, and they they can be zeroed. You can loosen them and, and set it to zero, so you know where you are, and take off one thousandth of an inch. There you go. Now you can see it. You can take off uh, one thousandth of an inch at a time with these shear lines and they're, you know, for small work, I just don't think you can beat it. Move 
move the camera around so you can see what the heck I'm doing here. Fly cutting really can make some smooth, smooth work. See how nice that looks. So now I can uh, I can take it out. It's eighth inch parallel just sets it up enough to keep it off my vise, keep the cutter off my vise. So now I've got the side in there. Same thing. Just gonna fly cut it. Looks good. So we've done this face and this face. This was already done. Alright, I just finished cleaning up the second one. So here they are. It's the two blocks. It's got to have a hole here for the screw that's going to hold it down to the table saw table and then it's going to have a hole here for the quarter 28 screw that's going to set the adjustment for me so I'll do that on both of them 